So I got a, what I remember from that period was that's when I was still at university, grew up on a farm, I was outside, you know, all the time, never have a shirt on, never put sunscreen on. And then it was like in the 80s when all of a sudden become aware of this. The ozone hole is a decrease in the amount of ozone over Antarctica and it's caused by uh, an increase in the amount of chlorine and bromine that comes primarily from human produced compounds, CFCs and things that are used in refrigerators, air conditioning units. Once they're in the atmosphere, the CFCs can stay there for 50 to 100 years. So the ozone hole is going to be around until the end of the century. The CFCs were banned because they were depleting uh, stratospheric ozone, um, and so that was the primary kind of goal of the Montreal Protocol. A secondary goal is that the CFCs are very potent greenhouse gases. Uh, and it turns out that the calculations indicate that the Montreal Protocol has done more to kind of reduce global warming than the Kyoto Protocol would have done even if it had stayed in, in effect. As part of the protocol and the amendments is we need to monitor what's happening to make sure that the countries or industries that agree to a ban are doing what they said they would do. As part of that monitoring, the scientists around the world realised that the concentration of these CFCs weren't going down as expected. Uh, the indications were that there were some additional sources coming out and it was thought that they were somewhere in East Asia. We should be worried about industries or countries not living up to um, their agreements, partly because it's going to take so long for the ozone hole to recover. So the CFCs have such a long lifetime that any little production we do now will be felt for decades to come. Um, I think a bigger picture is that we need to be doing this for other regulations that come along. So if there's any chance to have environmental regulations, a key aspect of that is being able to monitor and to kind of verify that industries or companies or countries are doing what they said they would do. So the, the Montreal Protocol is just over 30 years old and I think there is there's several kind of lessons. It was actually a pretty mild agreement so the reductions in the Montreal Protocol weren't that extreme and so it was a start and then there was a series of amendments as the science becomes solid, as replacements were developed, that they started to kind of, the series of amendments put the reductions down. So that's a lesson that the world can get together, can implement economic or environmental regulations in the face of, you know, an issue where it was pretty no well known there was going to be some consequences, but there was large uncertainty.